So I'm Eric Richardson. Eric was named after Eric Dolphy, great jazz musician. I'm actually the president of the NAACP. I currently live here and I'm also the chair of the health committee. The Mims House are both a parcel that was purchased in 1948 by C.B. Mims. First black owned home in Eugene and it's also the second oldest home built in Eugene. Uh, at the time, blacks could not own property within the city limits. And that is at the same time that the Mims were able to move in here, but that was because they had a patron who bought the property and basically allowed them to live there. C.B. Mills was a skilled millwright. He could run a mill all on his own, but his whole life, once he got here in the state of Oregon, he never got a job higher than a custodial. And so there was a plan hatched to go to local businessmen and say, look, we, we got a problem in the African-American community. There's a lack of opportunity for jobs. We want to participate in our community and, and live good lives too. Out of that group, there became an effort that made available four or five jobs that kept them employed for their lifetime. It was common practice to deny African people's lodging at the main prominent hotels in town. Back in the day when blacks weren't welcome here in Eugene, this house was welcome for blacks to have a safe place to come to. The Mims family became known as a stop in between Seattle, Portland, San Francisco. Eugene is a little spot. And so people did stop here. Louis Armstrong, Paul Robeson as well, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, amongst others, had an opportunity to stay in Eugene as they were traveling south or they had a show in Portland or they may have had a show here, but they couldn't even stay at the hotel where they were playing at. U of O athletes who weren't allowed to even stay on the campus dorms whilst they and their families were being recruited to come here who were there for the benefit of whites and for the greater community and yet were not given the dignity to be treated uh, as equals and to be able to walk through the front door of the establishment they're playing. And even into the 70s when I was here there were known regions and places in town that still had covenants with their neighborhood associations and whatnot that they will not rent to blacks. So Oregon is no different. Yeah, we're out here, we're far west, but we were part of the federal government and the federal government at the time said you can discriminate. That was the law of the land. And I think it still lasts with us today. We still conform when we come to Oregon. As a young man growing up here, going to school in high school in the 70s and 80s, I, every day, every night, catching the bus home, going anywhere in school, had to look up at the butte, and we had a 30-foot tall cross that was illuminated every night. It's very easy to say, oh, praise God, you know, we're a very Christian nation and we have a nice cross on our butte. But the reality is that original illuminated cross was the Klan cross that was burned up there on a regular basis on holidays and other festivities. And so when the electric cross was installed, it is with that history. And so here we are 40 some 50 years later and there's a, another generation, my generation and others, who we were really underserved in our local schools. Racism really had, was hard for us. Well, growing up here in Eugene, you know, it's, it's hard because the percentage is so small of black people. It can kind of affect the mind about 
who you really are as a black person. And I feel like that's what a lot of black people here in Eugene are going through, is trying to find out who they are. The NAACP and the MIMS House, they have a close relationship and it's for the black community to come and to have a safe place. This house uh, has its own history, being the second oldest house in Eugene in its own right. And then it has this added history of the African-American story. This house really represents the changes that we've seen in the United States and here in Oregon especially. I believe that this is a safe space. And these doors are open for everyone to come and to share this place and to garden with me and to, to volunteer. And I'm so blessed that the MIMS have opened it up. They could have easily just kept it alone, you know, and just kept it to themselves. I just like this place to be a community center. That all people can come and learn, loan a book out, come have some classes, let people know where we've been so we're not rehashing same battles or same discussions and we can really move it forward to a better place. We have beauty, history, and a motivation to take our community to a better place. And here we are and come and join us.